Hello one and all, my name is John Clare. This is John's Dark Heart, and as always, you are very welcome. Now, today's piece I want to talk about is actually part of a series. And we're going to talk about that series over the next seven weeks. And if that wasn't enough of a clue, it's the seven deadly sins. And the first of the sins we're going to talk about is pride. And here it is for you here now. And now that you've had a good look at that, what we'll do now is we'll go into the walkthrough. I'll talk about how the piece was done. And then we might even talk about the subject matter at the end, because I'm sure that could be quite a bit spicy. Uh, so let's do that now, shall we? So here we are, we're in Procreate. But before I start launching into the usual Canvas information and the actual time lapse, I actually wanted to talk about the subject matter first and foremost. Now, the first of the deadly sins I'm depicting here is pride. And what better animal to depict pride than the lion? You know, lions live in prides. They are universally seen as symbols of power, of regality, of pride. And the things with pride, you can look at it in one of two ways. Right? Pride can be seen as vainglorious, or something that's, you know, someone who's loud, someone who's obnoxious, someone who's arrogant. But also pride can be looked at as pride in one's abilities, pride in one's achievements, pride in confidence in oneself. And lions kind of exude that really. That's why as a species, we, the human being who sees symbolism in everything, looks at the lion and sees pride, sees power, sees confidence. And I felt that it was the obvious candidate for pride in the seven deadly sins. So, now that we've got that out of the way, what I'm gonna do, first and foremost, we'll hop into uh, Canvas and Canvas information. And we'll go into the usual statistics, the word that I love saying. And we can see here that the track time is 22 hours and 17 minutes, and the total strokes made are 10,159. So, quite an involved piece. Now, it may not be obvious when you see it here now, but a lot of the reason for it would be like the way I kind of drew, uh, drew out the fur because I know in some pieces I've done it and it's a lot more kind of, you know, once I get past the face and the head, I tend to be a lot looser with it. But if you notice here, I'm a lot tighter with a lot of my stroke making, a lot of my mark making. So what we'll do now, if we go into the video and we'll go into time maps replay, And this is something that you'll see throughout as well. I like to put these little quotes in at the start. The reason being is because when I initially drew these, I knew that they were gonna be put up on Instagram as time lapses. And I kind of liked putting this in as a little kind of addition to the piece to kind of give emphasis to the meaning. But I've got to admit, I have not wed Wuthering Heights. So, you know, who said it or why it was said, I don't know, but I just liked the quote. I thought it was quite succinct to the artwork and the subject matter. So anyway, all right, our line's upside down, so let's correct that. We'll scrub on a little bit, but as, as you can tell, like, at the start at least, anyway, very loose, very, very loose. There's no, you know, I'm not really kind of, I'm just kind of roughing it out quickly, right? That, that, that initial stage would not have taken very long, maybe about half an hour, if that. It's only when you start really getting into the nitty gritty, really getting into the details, that's when the, the that's really when the time is spent. And this is the reason why there's so many strokes on the canvas information, those 10,000 plus strokes. It would be lots of lots of little mark making around the, around the head, or around the rest of the body in fact, but it's drawing the fur and making it look convincing, making it look, you know, feel right. Just bear in mind, like I said before in, in previous, I'm not interested in a photographic depiction of what I'm drawing. I want it to be a drawing, but I want it to be a very good drawing. So this is why I invest so much time into my mark making, because I want my marks to, I want to make sure my marks look like they're depicting what I intend them to depict, if that makes any sense. And even when it came to the, the lion's mane, because there's like there, there's a lot of detail. Hold on a second, it's flipped upside down again. Um, 
there's a lot of detail within the lines, mate. You know, and I wanted to. And that's another thing I wanted to recapture. I didn't want it necessarily to be just like hurriedly drawn lines to vaguely indicate that there's the main. I wanted to kind of capture all those, all, all the mattedness, the, the where the yeah the the texture, the the the, f the form of the main, if that makes any sense. I didn't want it to look perfect. I think that's what I'm trying to get to. I didn't want it to look like a perfectly. I didn't want to. I didn't want my line to look like it just come from a Timothy commercial. But again, even with the mark making down at the foot here, nothing's rushed. I mean, I, I, you know, I really did take my time with this and really did build up. I mean, I was, I've got to say one to give myself a little bit of credit. I think I, I was actually quite deft in my mark making here. Because usually I'm quite heavy-handed um, as a criticism of myself, but with this one here, I, I did really kind of keep it as a light touch, and I think it works well. Finishing off the main round back of the shoulders, and then starting working way down the underside of the body. You can get in the details in around the rib cage in there. Just taking my time because one thing um i might not have said this for a while now but you've got to bear in mind when it comes to my it's not just about adding and sometimes it is about subtracting you know with certain marks so if i can find something where that would... so if, see up here around here around up so i've roughed out roughly where i wanted to shade things but then over time i've come back in again and i've I've taken, I've added at certain areas and I've taken away at certain areas because again, the great flexibility working with digital is because, I'll show you here again, if we go here, like technical pencil, which is what I usually use to draw with. All right, so I've taken technical pencil, but if I go into my erase tool, I can also select technical pencil. So I can erase in the same brush that I'm drawing in. So that, so that always gives consistency in the mark making. So if you need to bring up highlights, yes, you can draw with white if you wanted to, but sometimes erasing and bringing back, uh, uh, taking away marks is just as effective as adding them. And then taking care around the back leg here, like, because I wanted to get in like these blood vessels and all this other information here down here, the, the, the musculature of the rear leg. And the fact that he's, that his rear paw is just basically brushing the floor as he's moving forward. And that's it there. Okay, so that's it there now. And it's a drawing I'm pretty happy with, I've got to say. Pretty proud of it. <laughs> proud, pride, hat. And I thought it might be kind of cool to talk about the actual subject matter now. The actual subject matter surrounding pride itself. And I think we should do that now. So let's do that. Now, okay, so that was Pride. Um, yes, it will be up for sale on the website. It will be available in A3 for 75 euros and A4 for 45 euros. So if you'd like to go over there, pick yourself up a print, support us in what we're doing, we be very much appreciated. Thank you very much. Okay, so Pride, interesting subject now. Right, in the Seven Deadly Sins, I, I depicted a line, right? lion because lions often found in prides um, they're often seen as symbols of confidence of regency of self-belief and i find it quite interesting because when you look at the actual historical interpretations of pride i mean in the bible pride comes before the fall um c.s lewis even turned around and said um, that pride is the anti-god state now I find that really interesting because like pride comes before the fall. Obviously that's, I think that's linked to uh, Lucifer Morningstar's fall from grace as one of, of, of one of the angels of God to becoming the leader of the underworld. Which is interesting because like the more modern interpretation of pride, and this is the interpretation that I take on. It's more that taking pride in your ability, taking pride in your achievements, taking pride in your family, taking pride being proud of what you're what you've done and what you're capable of doing 
I don't see these as being negative attributes because more often than not, if you take pride in yourself as an athlete, as a boxer or a runner or whatever field that you're competing in, you need to take pride in your achievements and what you're able to do in order to, in order to progress your capabilities in competition. If anything, it's, an, it's, it's kind of a, ne- a necessity. For me, I take pride in my work. Um, I take pride in what I've done. I also take pride in what I'm capable of doing. Now, I understand why it can be seen in the negative and why historically it has been seen as a negative because like, confidence and arrogance are very comparable. You know, they're, if you like, two sides of the same coin. Now, I have been, on occasion, including by my own mother, been called arrogant. I don't see myself as being arrogant. I see myself as being confident. The reason why I see myself as being confident is because I can look back at what I, what I can do and what I have done and take confidence in that. Whereas arrogance is more... I think arrogance is more closer to what we've... What is what was traditionally viewed as pride where you believe in yourself over other people where you believe yourself more important than other people where you believe yourself to be um, more important than if you're a religious person if you're more important than God I think that that delineation needs to be made because I think the problem with language is it's very difficult to be exacting with it this is why lawyers get paid so much money because they need to have an exact understanding of language. And this is why a lot of legal documents make absolutely no sense to most lay, per, uh, lay people, like myself, for instance. And the word, the meaning of words change over time. So do I see pride in the modern sense as a negative? No. I think it's important to take pride in your appearance because it's how you're seen by the world. I think it's important to kind of take pride in your achievements because if you don't turn around and say I'm good at something then who else is going to you know if you want society to believe that you are of worth and that you are capable of contributing to society then you need to have confidence in yourself to be able to to contribute to society to contribute to your family to contribute to your community so I think that it's an interesting dichotomy. Do I see pride in the modern sense as being sinful? No. But I can see how in the past it was. And I think it's an interesting thing to kind of look into and to try to examine because as words uh, change over time, because their meanings do change over time. Because initially I believe it was vaingloria, um, vain, vainglory, which I think is kind of more, uh, was I think it's more apropos to um, the initial attention of pride because if you're vainglorious it's like the vainglorious general who leads his troops to unnecessary slaughter like most of the generals in World War One, for instance who would quite happily send young men over the top to get hate, to get mown down by machine gun bullets I don't know I, I, I just think it's quite interesting I, I, it's, it's something that I'm wrestling with because the reason why I'm wrestling with it is because the meaning of the word is so kind of fluid it doesn't really mean what I feel it's intending to mean. Like, it, like um, the Latin word superbia, the Greek word hubris. Hubris is probably, in the English translation, also a better word to use. Because hubris is overconfidence going into arrogance. It's like, how can I put it in a personal context? For me to feel hubristic would be to be able to turn around and tell you that I'm the best artist in the world. That's hubris. That's vainglorious. That's prideful. But I'm not. And I don't think there's any artist on God's green earth who could turn around and say that they're the best artist that's ever been. Because art is subjective. People will love different artists for different reasons. I will resonate with um, different artists' work for different reasons. I see no, ro- I see no problem in someone take pride in the level of technique that they've been able to build up, or the level of technical mastery that they've been able to build up. Because, again, that sense of pride in your accomplishments leads you to becoming better at what you're doing. But 
if you turn around and start saying things like I'm the best in the world like unless you can demonstrably prove it like for instance if you're Usain Bolt who is literally the fastest man in modern history since recorded history he's the fastest man no one can argue that but if you look at the way he carries himself does he carry himself like a vain prideful arrogant twat no he comes across as a bit of a dude do you know what I mean so he comes across as someone who's very relaxed very humble very you know he's very aware of his roots so it'd be very easy for him to turn around and start becoming hubristic and prideful but he doesn't come across like that I think once you maintain a sense of self and once you uh, maintain a, a knowledge of your own humanity and your own limits and if you like I said if you are religious I'm not but I do appreciate that for those who are religious being prideful you know be, uh, having, having a degree of humility I think is very important because you know I can understand where it comes from I was raised Catholic so I do understand where a lot of that kind of uh, sentiment comes from but I think that what I want to try and get to is that pride can be a positive in the, in, in the more modern sense of the word because it, like I said, it's an enabler. It will enable you to do things, to be able to push past your limits, to be able to take pride in your accomplishments. And, you know, I think, I don't see that as being a negative. I really don't. And I think it's really important for people to be able to do that, to have that kind of sense that, you know, I've achieved something. You know, I can take confidence in that. And therefore, that breeds confidence within yourself. But at the same time, you know, there is... I think once that confidence is built on something that's concrete and foundational, then it isn't prideful in the historical sense. It's not hubristic. It's not vainglorious. Say, for instance, the last thing you want to do is become a Bernie Madoff or a Sam Bankman Freed, someone who instills confidence in people only to make off with their money, who falsely claims that their great financial investment skills would enable you to make money if only you would invest in them only for them to make off and make off of billions of dollars and then subsequently get arrested and put into prison for hundreds of years by the American government. Now that is pride in the historical sense as far as I can see, in the more, uh, the vainglorious, the hubristic. But pride in oneself and pride in and taking confidence in one's abilities and trying to make a positive contribution to humanity and to their communities and to their families and whatever else that I don't see as a negative it's it it comes down to basically the choices that you as a human choose to make if you want to do something positive and take pride in that that's grand but if your pride leads you to do things that are more destructive and more manipulative and only benefit yourself then that's where pride comes before the falls, so to speak, at least in my opinion. But anyway, I'm gonna round this out by saying that pride isn't necessarily in of itself the problem. The problem is where, I think I agree with C.S. Lewis's assertion that it was through pride that the devil, devil became the devil. Pride leads to every other vice. That's the, pro that's the thing that I think is important. Pride leads to every other vice, if only if you allow it to. And I think that it's you as an individual that make the choice between whether or not you are prideful, uh, that your pride will be something, your pride in yourself will be something that will be benefit people or the pride that you feel in yourself becomes something that is of detriment and will that will not only negatively affect the community and people around you, but also lead to your own downfall in, in the long run. And yeah, I'm going to leave it there. So anyway, my name's been John Clow. This has been John Starcart. And as always, you have been very welcome. Till next time.